Hello, welcome to Reaction Shots for July. I'm Isla, that's Hubie. Michael P. Sup. Huber. Sup. This month we're talking about spies. Spies. Operatives. Spies. Austin agents, Powers. Austin Powers, man of mystery. The spy who shagged me. Yes. Weirdly, I saw that movie like seven times in the theater when I was a kid. I think we all did. Weird times. We I saw Spider-Man 1 three times on opening day. <laughs> wow. On the same day? Same day. Morning, noon, and night. Sorry, I'm adjusting my mic here. Saw it I with think... three different humans. Same day. Same day. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 1. Oh, Spider-Man 1. Yep. Sam Raimi, though. Yep. I respect that. Is that weird? I think my, my in theater record, I think, is She's All That. Nice. I think we saw it like 19 times in theaters nice. because we were high schoolers and there was nothing better to do. Nice. Yeah. But before we talk about spies, what have you liked lately? Got some good ones. Been going back to the movie theater. In person. In person. I've done it. I'm vaxxed. I'm fearless. <laughs> And I'm back in the theaters. I'm vaxxed, but I'm still, I'm still a feared. Yeah, I mean, I'm nervous. Delta variant. Yeah, you know, sit away from people. Keep the Be mask cautious. on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a Quiet Place too. Oh, how was it? Freaking awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Really, really liked it. Saw it with my dad. Um, oh, I love that. Just a sick ass movie. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Really, okay. there's uh, nothing more to say about it. I was a little bummed. You let me know if you think Emily Blunt was sidelined or not. I feel like I could have used a little more blunt. I can always use more blunt. Exactly. Honestly, it's never enough. So maybe that's just why I felt like she was kind of shafted in it. Mm -hmm. um, that's Her my husband only... directed it. Yeah. So excited about that whole franchise. That makes me curious about... What, what I mean by that? Yeah, like... Yeah, I don't know. I don't the know. The kid's the main character. Nothing to say here. What's Nothing it all to say. Mean? It's a really cool movie. Check it out. Had to see it in the theater. Mm. That audio? I don't go to horror movies in the theater. I always am af I'm afraid mm. of them. I watch um, them on my television. Nice. My So I saw it with my dad. My best friend, Grumbomb, who I always reference. Sorry, we, Brad. We... <laughs> Rip I have Brad. multiple best friends. Uh -huh. uh, we share a deep, deep love for the Purge franchise. Forever Purge. So I saw the Forever Purge. With Grumbomb. With Grumbomb. And it was not as good as the others. You know, diminishing returns. But I still enjoyed it. And I can honestly say confidently that all five Purge movies... There are five? Yep. And this a is TV the fifth one. And a TV show with two seasons. Yeah. All of them, if you like the franchise, if you like The Purge, I really truly feel like they're all good. Okay. And I think that is something to say. The creator, James DeMonico, he wrote and directed the original three, mm -hmm. wrote the prequel, and now this one as okay. well. So, it, so right. he's got his hand in it, and, he, and you need that. You need he's that. been on board. Yeah. Uh, Was he involved in the show? Yes. He didn't show run it, but he oversaw it. Okay. Um, and I know he wrote at least the pilot episode, for sure. Very cool. Um, Forever Purge, though. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Good kills. Speaking of good kills, another horror movie. I'm on a horror kick here. Fear Street. Oh, I haven't watched it yet. Fear Street 94. Uh, seven, 1978? 76? Whatever. No, it comes out tonight. They're going backwards in yeah, time. Yeah, they're going back. And oh. then the finale next week is going to be 1666. The Order. Yes, I'm excited. Is that the year of the Order? 1886. 1886? 1886? Yeah, yeah, Order yeah. shout out, though. Nice. I know you love a good Order <laughs> shout out. Nice. I was thinking about the Order the other day when I was watching The Rocketeer. Nice. At the end when they're on the Zeppelin. Do we need a Rocketeer game? Honestly. Video game? Yeah. That would be sick. Like a newer, high-budget one. I forgot. That movie is... Weird. I love it. I haven't seen it in so long. Oh, uh, me neither. Yeah. And it, it's my friend AJ's like favorite movie. And like, I forgot that he only rocketeers like three times. Yeah. In the whole movie. Because they treat it like a prototype, like yeah, a special. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're He's, like, this thing is probably too dangerous to be using, but yeah. Extenuating circumstances. Got to get my dame. So sick. From the South Seas Club or whatever. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember anything. I just remember. Where's the rocket? Timothy Dalton, yeah, that dude. Crazy character. Oh, that guy, yeah. yeah the weird scared face me as a guy. kid. Yeah. 
Uh, Fear Street, though, really fun, campy. The rare horror movie that, it, you know, it it's like a rated R Stranger Things. Yeah. But a PG-13 it. The okay. movie's rated R. Yeah, But yeah, think yeah, of that. Yeah, it's yeah. PG-13 it slash rated R Stranger Things. Yeah. And that's kind of the vibe. Um, it was sold to me as a grown-up movie for people who grew up watching, um, like, Goosebumps. Yeah, and Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah, Are stuff. You Afraid it's of the Dark? Perfect, yeah. perfect description. Absolutely. Um, and it's it. It's just fun, too, knowing that all three movies are kind of, uh, you know, coming out one after another. So mm-hmm. it's, you can enjoy this self-contained, but there's also the hints of a bigger oh, thing. I talking like about the happen. history of this town. Like, it's a fun movie. And it doesn't the wear Cosmere. out its welcome. Yeah, it's like an hour 40-something. Love that. And then uh, lastly was No Sudden Move, which maybe we'll talk about. It was kind of a spy movie, kind of not. More I didn't of a gangster see movie. It come up. Okay. It's more a gangster it crime thriller. That's the new Soderbergh joint, which I have not yep. yet seen. Yep. Is it on HBO? It is. Oh, it's real nice. max. So nice. love you that can, HBO uh, we can max. talk about it next time when you watch it. Yeah. I'll have to watch I it. Color. I love Soderbergh. Exactly. Could, I don't want to color anything. We could do in your a Soderbergh episode. Totally. Totally. I've still never seen Schizopolis, though. I'd have to watch I've that one. I've never seen that one, That's no. like his first. No. Never saw that. Never saw Kafka. Love Kafka. Never saw Seriously, I love something. Kafka. Yeah. Ugh. <sighs> the Nick. The Nick. Did you ever watch The Nick? Never saw season two. I watched part of season two, and I just got so depressed. Yeah, I, I started it. out... I saw the first one, and you know how that begins. Yeah. It's just like, dude, I, I'm, I'm yeah. good for a minute. It's so good. That soundtrack <laughs> yeah. is so good. Hell yeah. Is that Cliff Martinez that he always works with? It's really good stuff. Um, cool. I finished. Mm-hmm. You done? <gasps> Bosch final season. Oh. Bosch final season. So good. It's everything you want from a final season, dude. Just it is eight episodes instead of ten. So focused cameos no bullshit like such a good season great series finale you can't always say that yeah shout out to bosch just a calls it like it is just a like an, a pessimistic show about humanity love that so good love that show good freaking show you and Sarah Silverman loves it too. Sick. Her dad got her into it too. Love it. Quintessential dad show. Such I a guess. dad show. Such a dad show. <laughs> yeah. I uh, speaking of gr- sticking the landing, great finales. I just finished watching Dark. Nice. Oh, I want to watch this German time travel opus. Is it as legendary as they would have us believe, Isla? It is very, very good. <laughs> Sick. Like really, very good. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's hard to tell people apart. Sometimes, like, sure. it's, it's just like, who, who is that? Like, who are you? Yeah, like, any any foreign anything. You're watching a foreign country's anything. It can be difficult to keep track of names. With, I'm what told you, I'm watching Beyond Evil. Oh, yeah. And it's when they're talking about people off screen, it's like hard to get mm. all the names and stuff. Yeah, this one's. I mean, and I speak a little bit of German. Yeah. Uh, so like that helped me out, but like, man, sometimes I'm well, and just <sighs> the nature of the story too. You're just kind of like, what? Yeah. I, I just embraced. Because I watched it pretty spread out. I'd watched season one a long time ago, and then I watched season two like a few months back. And yeah. then I did season three over the last like maybe a couple of weeks. But like there were plot points I was just like, what? I don't remember that letter. Like what hmm. was that? You know, or something. And yeah. I, I just embraced not knowing. And then yeah. usually like a few episodes later, the show always like catches you back up. Totally. But it doesn't, there are no previously ons. It doesn't do anything like handholdy yeah. at all. Like yeah. this, this is like a, it's like a hardcore video game with Got like it. lore and stuff. You have to just like you play this. Show. Divinity original sin. Yeah, yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. TV. It's not gonna hold your hand. Nice. But then it it wraps up so satisfactorily. Nice. Like sticks the landing. It it, it you know it it hits emotionally. It's so good. I That's really awesome. really liked it. Um. Then just shout out. It's still ongoing, so we won't talk about it. But shout out to Loki. I've been enjoying it so far. For sure. Um. Yeah, I feel like I probably watched something else recently, but whatever. I saw In the Heights. It was all right. 
Uh, I'm trying to go with Beth. To, I want to see that in the theater as well. A friend of mine rented the th- rented a theater so out, cool. and then That's like so 30 cool. of us went. Need that audio. That's the only time I've been in a theater. Need that sound. Yeah, Black Widow's tonight, and this will be the first you MCU. You tonight? No. This will be the first MCU movie I don't see on opening night, like wow. in ever maybe, dude. Honestly. It's been, I can't remember the last time that happened. How does it feel to be a living failure? Because <laughs> opening, like the Thursday night? It's electric. At least in LA. It's usually, electric. It's electric, and it's also serious, and it's also like never sold out weirdly. You would think it would be. But like it's Black Friday. Widow Thursday night is not going to be sold out. Friday gets all the all the lo- love. F- Friday night is sold out. Yeah. Because well, most people night. most people unlike us have like regular jobs. Exactly. Exactly. The Friday you work in the morning. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. Um. But yeah, I'll probably catch that um tomorrow night maybe. You gonna Disney Plus that or are you gonna I theater think that? I have yet to 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 take the thirty dollar Disney Plus premium BS. Same. I'm. I think I'm gonna do it for this one. I think yeah. I'm gonna do comfort it for of this your one. own home. I've got a 4K TV. Yeah. You know my sound bar, whatever does okay. Yeah. It's fine. I want to feel the base of my chest. Yeah. Because I remember the only my only takeaway. You one of those vests that like yes. rumbles on you. Dude, that'd be so fun. <laughs> 4D. Yeah. The takeaway from the only trailer I saw years ago when this movie was supposed to come out was when she like throws that person through a window. And the le- her leg gets, it's like you feel the impact. Oh, yeah. And then I saw just a quote from the director of just like, I really wanted the audience to feel the impacts. Well, so I was legit putting those, it's really funny. Those like, I saw a trailer, it didn't see anything since. And then now the director is like doing the rounds. Yeah. I was like, okay. Feel the impact. Feel the impact is my Michael anticipation Huber. now for Black <laughs> Widow. <laughs> yeah, dude. I saw a thing that today that was like, and obviously Black Widow coming out today when you're watching this probably um is why we are doing spies this month so it's a good segue in Mm -hmm. but i saw someone say that it's marvel's born nice and i was like shit yeah dude yeah green grass yeah (laughs) give me that shaky cam yeah dude um speaking of which i asked our lovely patrons on the film and soundtrack club patron level and up so seven dollars and up you get to uh, join in on these amazing discussions. That we have a really good time. Uh, the good good gang of people in here that's talking about movies. We all love it. Um, Seven dollars and up. Join us. Check it out. That's where I pull all these comments from. All right. Where'd my mouse go? There it is. Oh, I saw it. I saw it. My mouse. I'm. Does I'm anybody this. say Three Days of the Condor? Ooh, I don't know. Would the year of living dangerously count? No, I don't remember. That's a good movie. Yeah, they're like spies in that. Yeah. Right? I don't know. It's fun. I'm using a mouse to operate a computer in an entirely different room, so things are a little squirrely. Squirrely. I asked, first of all, what the best spy flick or show is. Mission Impossible 1. Up there Mission for Impossible me. comes it's up. It's so... High up there for me. Mission Impossible comes up. Obviously, yeah. I love Patriot. I think Patriot, 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 and The Prisoner have to be tied for me for the best spy show. Sick. Like they're phenomenal. Yeah. For me, it's The Americans. Oh yeah, I, I haven't. I've only seen a few episodes of that, and I really enjoyed it, but I didn't watch the whole thing. So ba- Americans gets a lot of nods. In fact, I think excellent. Bradley spies. Uh, I'm saying I heard it, that it was way spies. today. I'm saying spies because it's a spy episode. Okay. They say I, I like feel that. obligated I like to that. comment on this episode for obvious reasons. See, so let me just say shout out to the Americans. Ah <laughs> yes. Certainly has its share of more actiony spy moments, but also a really great look at a lot of the more mundane and perhaps practical aspects of spycraft. Mm-hmm. At least for a per- uh, particular form of it, a definite don't skip from me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what I watched of that I really liked. Love it. Yeah, you were like it was it was your I feel like you were hyped on it before Vikings. Yeah, it was one of my it when it was airing is legit one of my favorite shows on TV period. Boardwalk Empire still your favorite ever? What's your favorite? Probably, honestly. Yeah. Is Boardwalk Empire. Um I mean, I I put Breaking Bad in a separate oh, category. Yeah, you can't yeah, really yeah. like there's Breaking just Breaking Bad. I'm weird. I always have my like 
special categories that are just above <laughs> it all. Yeah, uh-huh. people are like, "What's your no, best movie of all time?" It's like, well, it's Aliens, but like, it's boring to count that. You know, right, that's just right, above right, it all. Right, right. <laughs> well, that to me, the big distinction is favorite and best. Yeah, like my favorite movie is The Princess Bride, right? Yeah. But it's like, is that the best film ever made? <laughs> I mean, yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Vrun Kochwaha says the Melissa McCarthy film Spy was actually pretty decent. Mm. I remember the trailers for this. Uh, much better than I expected it to be. I only watched it because my friend wanted to go to the cinema and nothing else looked <laughs> nice, better. Nice. <laughs> but shout out to it for being better than uh, it, than I thought. Uh, carrying on the comedy theme, 21 and 22 Jump Street, two of my favorite so comedy funny. films. Those are both really good. Find the dealers, infiltrate the suppliers. <laughs> or wait, yeah. infiltrate the dealers, find the suppliers. It's one of those. <laughs> I like it. Is it in the end of 21 or 22 when, like, the cast of the original TV show, like, shows up? Maybe two. Um, and then Do they, you know the joke behind the that it find the suppliers, infiltrate the dealers? Uh-uh. They were writing the screenplay, and it was so convoluted, and everyone was like, we cannot follow this movie. We don't get it. We don't understand. Oh, is this? Yeah. So then, like... Find the dealers, infiltrate the suppliers. So that became like the mantra of the script. So oh, then in funny. the movie, they're just like saying that. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. Yeah. So I mean, funny. that's great. Yeah. If you find yourself, you're writing a script <laughs> yeah. and you're, you're running into a, the same problem. Yeah. Put it in the movie. Put it, <laughs> down. Put yeah. it in the movie. Uh, and then uh, Vroon um, concludes with Inception is my favorite spy film, especially the whole yeah. tactic that they employ to actually pull off the Inception. It has some great ideas. And I thought uh, that I thought were unique and interesting on the whole. And the music by Hans Zimmer is beautiful and timeless classic. Legendary. Yeah. I'm glad we're past, we're pretty much past the Hans Zimmer meme of <laughs> bah, bah. It's, we're past it now. Yeah. We're through it. That soundtrack, Although iconic. Just today, my girlfriend Sophia was saying, like, should we split a subscription to the master class? And she's like, there's probably some synth stuff in there. <laughs> and then she goes, Hans Zimmer has an, uh, a thing. And, <laughs> and one of them is a synth. And then she said, you can learn how to boah. <laughs> So it's not dead. It's still there. It's, it's still, still bubbling that was, in the surface. That was three hours ago. <laughs> <It's so funny. laughs> um, but yeah, Inception is really cool, and for sure a spy film. Like I, I, I can't can't not think that the snowy area was. It has to be a nod to James Bond. It has to. It be. has to be has like to be. skiing around. Like it's Nolan, gotta be. Just make a Bond movie, bro. He should, dude. What are you doing, bro? Just do it. He should. That'd be good. I never thought about that. He's the perfect human to make a Bond movie. <laughs> I'm glad you followed that up with to make a Bond movie. Yeah. I was or like, I don't know. It seems a little pompous. He fits the bill. He fits the bill. Do, does he get action-y enough, though? He's always so... His action is yeah. still, like, so cerebral. Yeah. You know? And, like, sometimes the action is not well photographed. Like, mm-hmm. it, the shaky camera, too dark, and most of those Batmans... Yeah, I'm trying to think of like big gunfights that are like excellent from him. I don't think Christopher Nolan has an excellent gunfight. You can correct me has if I'm some, wrong, but like they're not that memorable. They're not like John Wick levels. No, no. I mean, much not much is. Yeah. They're not like Wild Bunch. Mm-hmm. They're not top God, tier. Wild Bunch, man. You like Wild Bunch? I love Wild Bunch. That's not a spy movie though. Hmm. Um, that's, uh, that's, I'll have to re- reevaluate that. Reexamine Nolan's gunfights. Who would be? Let's talk about that. Who would be? Who would be the best Bond director? I really think Nolan gets the scale of it. He gets the intimacy. He gets the spectacle of what a James Bond movie should be. Yeah. He lo- like adventure, chase. Yeah. That's so Nolan. There's well, especially in the he fits in with the like new Bond, like the Daniel Craig yeah. Bond. Yeah. Where it's like basically almost the same as Mission Impossible. Mission <laughs> Impossible is even goofier <laughs> now than Bond. Like, Bond used to be pretty yeah. goofy. We got Fast and Furious coming up in there, too. Yeah, yeah, oh, my God. Yeah. Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah. a farce of, of a Bond movie. <laughs> I think Denis Villeneuve could do a pretty good Bond. I mean, sure. Sicario has, like, I mean, it's super intense, like, way more intense. Yeah. He might be too Meaningful serious. Bond kills. Right. Oh, my God. Every R-rated. time Bond pulls his gun, you're yeah. going to know it. R-rated, like, psychologically devastating Bond film. <laughs> Yo, here's the pitch. Uh-huh. Okay. Daniel Craig abandons the role. So yeah. be it. Okay. Yeah. 25 years from now. In real life. In real life. <laughs> Good Lord. Daniel Craig reprises the role with Villeneuve. Punished. <laughs> They're both like 90 yeah, years old. <laughs> punished James Bond psychological drama. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like Logan. Yeah. It's like <laughs> yes. It's like James Bond is just like. Ugh. It's like the gray like punches a wolf. So the into hell. It. So down. I don't know if I could handle the like old man. They always pull me back in, like James Bond. Like no. I don't know if that's a thing. It'd be, him, it'd be him having to like deal with it though. Like he's traumatized. Oh my god! You know what? He tries to like he tries to like go to bed with a woman to get like intel, but he has erectile dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> and they have to wait for his Cialis to kick in. <laughs> he's like, who am I? Yeah, he's like, who am I if I cannot <laughs> bed them? Yeah. <laughs> He's so funny. I'm very curious about the new one. Uh, I love Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Yeah. And so, like, having her come in to, like... Shore it up. I don't know, feminize the script? And I know that Daniel Craig has famously, like, many times said that he finds Bond despicable. Yeah. Which I actually find lends to his performance. Like, he's he's my favorite Bond because... I get it. It's similar to to Patriot for me, where I get a little bit, not quite, obviously not quite yeah. as much. It's not overt, but I get shades. This is maybe my favorite thing of 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 the spy genre on the whole, mm-hmm. is people doing things that they don't want to, totally, but still doing it, yeah, because they know they have to yeah. for whatever reason. The they ends believe. justify the means, right? Like, I, I love when Q Ju- uh, Dame Judy Dench calls him a blunt instrument. I yeah. think in. Um, Casino Royale? Totally. One of I think it's in Casino Royale. Casino, yeah. Uh, I just, I love that aspect of spydom where it's like, no, you have to do this and you're dead inside because of it. Totally. It's fantastic. And I, I get it. that in, in, in Daniel Craig's eyes sometimes where it's For just like, sure. when I love in Casino Royale when he like, the, they, they show the, yeah, Vesper, like they show the moment he just decides to never trust women again. Yeah. When he's like, the bitch is dead. Yeah. And like you could tell how Such pained an he is. Line. He's so pained. It's so <laughs> intense. And it's like the that bitch is dead. The bitch is dead. <laughs> but like he's so pained when he says that you can tell he's putting on airs. Yeah. Like he's deeply wounded but doesn't show it because he's like a big strong man. Totally. Protecting Ugh, himself. It's good, yeah. Uh Jacopo Amelli, uh, who graciously sent in that Surface 2 that we're going to be using for Mysterious Monsters Ooh. Season 2 and is currently the chat computer in the other room. Thank you so much for that. We needed it. Um, hello, Isla and Huber. Aside from the eternally mentioned Patriot, yes, I recommend checking out the miniseries The Spy and the movie The Courier. They are not masterpieces, but they are re- a refreshingly non-actiony. They are reflect reflect. Ugh refreshingly non-action-y. That's hard for me to say. And I found a core of honesty in them, regardless of the su- subjects and their inaccuracies. Also, shout out to the classic The Third Man, and most importantly to the wonderful The Lives of Others, Lives one of the of greats. Lives of Others. I haven't seen that one. So intense about, like, listening in. Ooh, like The Conversation. Yes. One of my very favorite similar, films of all similar, time. Yes. yes. The Conversation, one of my favorite films. Um, does anybody bring up Ronin? Yes. Nice. We get there. We, okay. Okay. We go. We go hard on Ronan. Okay. Actually, I'm <laughs> anticipating. Which it. I was floored by. I was like, because I used to watch Ronan yeah. as a little kid. I would yeah. watch Ronan like over and over Hell and yeah. over and over again. I Rocket Launcher out of it. a freaking sunroof. Yeah, dude. The car chase is insane. Oh, so also, awesome. that cemented my love for that actress whose name I can't recall, but she's like such a queen. So is al- al- yeah. so, always so alluring to me. Um, was she in the game? No, that's a different person. It's like she could be your mom or a highly trained killer. Oh, okay. That's the balance she <laughs> gives off. That's the vibe I get from her. I was always I was always just like having a crush on her. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I was like, where are we going with this humor? Because your read on this chick is different than mine. I, I'm always like, she can like, you know... She can like beat you up, but you enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> like the girl in um, um, actually, my mom didn't want me to watch Goldeneye when I was a teen because of the woman who kills people with her legs. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah, because my mom was like, I don't want you to see um, sexuality 
being like weaponized. weaponized. Yeah, like weaponized. like the, she she thought it was like yeah a bad image for me, which like hey I mean probably not wrong. It's like pretty intense. She's like strangling dudes. It is really intense. What a way to go though. Yeah, what a way. Is that pleasure or pain? <laughs> you know. Sign me up. Traveling snowman. Awesome. <laughs> this is my favorite category. My favorite movies are. Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, so good. The Debt, Zero Dark Thirty. The Debt, dude! Whoa! Whoa! One of the most underrated movies ever made. I don't know. One of the most I've... underrated, Helen Mirren, one of the most underrated movies ever oh, made. The Debt, I swear to God. I swear to God in my life, I saw The Debt in the theater and I came out of that thing blown away. When did it, when was it? Mid 2010s. Okay, I was going to say, It yeah, was one like... of the earliest movies I saw with Beth. And we saw it, and it became one of our like our our movies where we're just like, yo, the debt. <laughs> we like loved it. Such a good movie. I forgot all about it until just right now. <laughs> but, uh, I gotta watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Zero Dark Thirty Spy Game Born, obviously Breach, uh, A Most Wanted Man, Charlie Wilson's War, Argo, Three Days of the Condor, Condor. Three Days of the Condor. Uh, and a fantastic de- uh, miniseries from TNT called The Company. The debt has like the long revenge game plot. Oh my god! Of just yeah. yo payoffs. Payoffs. Yeah. Because it's love, like two different times, kind of. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, Murphy Jacks. Shout out to Martin Campbell's Bond movies. Shout Allen out. Golden Eye. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Colt Smith says, I love spy movies. I can talk about this subject all day, but I will keep it short, lol. My favorites broken up into some smaller categories. First, non, first, serious non-action. Cool. Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, Munich. The cast Munich. direction and story are all the best in the biz. Munich, I immediately bought on Blu-ray because it was in the vault for a very long time. It came oh. out on Blu-ray just a few years ago in the West in America. Maybe, it's been like four or five years now. And I've been waiting for the perfect moment to watch it, and it has not come yet. So you bought it and have not yet. I bought it, it with the intent of watching it immediately because I had wanted to. Be- I've been wanting to watch it for now like yeah, seven yeah. years. <laughs> Rewatch. Rewatch. I've seen it before because I've never seen it. Excellent movie. One yeah. of the rare Spielberg rated R movies. Yeah, yeah, that. And it's like close to home with him. Saving Private really Ryan. Inten- that's him. Yep. Right? And uh, Jaws, Schindler's List. Schindler's. Jaws is R. Yeah. Amistad. He's got a few. It's like a handful. Yeah. Out five. of what, 50 movies? Yeah, he's directed a lot. Five R rated? He hasn't done a rated R in so long. He likes to keep it like PG, PG-13 so he can get yeah. get a message to the kids. You totally. Know? Uh, the Hunt for Red October and Argo. Second, Action Spy, Casino Royale, Mission Impossible, all of them, baby. All of them. And Patriot Games. Sick. Lastly, Comedy Spy, Top Secret, Shit Yeah, Vel Kimmer is one of the is best. Is that acknowledged that you time. heard me? No, that's oh, okay. that's actually a pretty good one. I, I think that's a spy movie. Um, that's, um, oh God, Spartan. Spartan. Yeah, that one's. It's less of a spy movie, more of like a rescue kidnapping movie. But uh, yeah, that's. I think he says indicate that you heard me. I zone out a lot, so <laughs> I always wants to make sure I hear things. So uh, she says. Acknowledge that you heard me, <laughs> yeah. and it's from this Val Kilmer movie that I still have not seen. Spartan, you'd love it. Yeah, um, yeah. He did. He did a few weird ones, like Salton Sea was a good one by him, and then Spartan. Spartan. Spartan, I think, was directed or written or both by um, David Mamet. Oh, maybe shit. is that? Am I making that up? Red Belt. Yeah, which I don't think I ever saw, but I mean, I knew him from plays. So like, I, I'd seen and been in a few of his plays. Um, not with him directly, but like in college. Uh, Spies Like Us and Austin Powers, just the first one. Spy who shagged me. Gold they all member. Have, they all have moments. Yeah. But the first one might be the best. Um, Tyler Travis, my two favorite films are The Third Man and The Conversation. There it is. If MacGyver was a spy, that's my pick for a TV show. Sure. He's like an action spy. The Conversation, dude. Mm-hmm. We got to talk about The Conversation. It's so good. It's the hidden masterpiece yeah. sandwiched between Godfather and Apocalypse Now. Yeah. You know, rarely gets mentioned. He like did it as like a part, I think it was like a deal or something. They were like, if I do this, I get to do this or something. Yeah. Francis Ford Coppola, Gene Hackman, 
he's Gene Hackman is like a, a like a introverted audio specialist who gets embroiled in this wacky thing with a recording, like trying to. It's like blow up or blow out, um, but with sound, and it's like, oh, it's so good. I I like read about this. Mm-hmm. I like have studied this movie. It's yeah. so good. I Sorry. love this movie. Um, yeah. <laughs> Javarav wanted to bring up the TV show Killing Eve. Nice. And also, does Kim Possible count? <laughs> she definitely counts. Everything counts. Everything counts. We are so loose. I have to watch Killing Eve. That's uh, Phoebe Waller Bridge, like, started it or something? Like, created it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I hear it's good. Just caught up on it all. Really, really liked it. I heard it's kind of gay, which I'm into. <laughs> nice. Uh, Super Sushi. Best show, Patriot, hands down. Thank you. Best flick. We're gonna we gotta finish that sometime soon. We could do it from in in the studio now. Please. We'd have to wear headphones. We had to wear headphones anyway. Best flick. I personally love Mission Impossible three the most because it has the strongest villain. Yeah, that one's a good villain. I'm gonna find her. I'm gonna I'm gonna hurt her. Hurt her is so much more intense than kill. Yeah. I'm gonna hurt her. Yeah. I don't like it. It yeah. freaks me the hell it's, out. It's vile, dude. It's personal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's unhinged. He's so- I love him in that. He's Ugh. so gross. Gross. Um, but they think Ghost Protocol is a better movie and probably the best spy movie. Ghost Protocol is fantastic. Mm-hmm. I think I saw legendary. Ghost Protocol. Legendary, legendary. I, I saw Ghost Protocol. I think we were like in Hawaii or something. Or um, we were somewhere. And I was with my mom and dad and sister. And it was like perfect. I might be weird, but saw it once in the theater confirmed recently saw it again at home because i was craving it each day that passes mission impossible fallout becomes one of my favorite movies of all time what yes i only saw it once i need to see it again i love I the fr- megan whatever through line was, yeah yeah i adore this movie i adore the plot i adore the set pieces i adore the stakes i'm obsessed with fallout i, I like fallout as of this point more than all. Wow. Like I gotta one watch it again. for nostalgia and one for the mood. It's like but one is almost like a like a film noir. One is very different one is, vibe. One is like a film noir and then Fallout is like a, an action adventure, you know? Yeah. So I really think there it's really hard to compare them even though it's the same franchise. Um but my god, I love Fallout. I think Henry Cav- Cavill is legendary in that movie. I think Yeah, he's really good. That the, bathroom fight the is the bathroom bananas. fight. The, the chase scenes, the freaking helicopter scene. like That that rock they hang off of, Sophia was telling me, is like yep. somewhere in Norway. Yep. And you're like not allowed to go on it, so yep. they were like flexing. Uh, and the gunfights. I think it's some of the strongest gunfights in the franchise too. Like really? when you, we talked about Impact, and uh, I think when Tom Cruise pulls his weapon each time in Fallout, it is tense. Meaningful. It's so meaningful. I got to watch it again. I have, It's been a while. Yeah. Ghost Protocol, I really love though too. At least I, I do is so cool. I always think of that one scene after the chase when the random cop stops him. Oh yeah. Wait. Do you remember? No. They're like smuggling. They're like doing a jailbreak. They're like smuggling away, and like this random foot cop comes out of nowhere. Oh and he's yeah, like, yeah, Stop! yeah, 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 yeah. Such a good scene. And then doesn't he say like, "You need you to should just, go. You should yeah. just go. You don't need to deal with us." It's so good. Yeah. Love it. I like moments like that where people who are like way out class yeah. someone are just like, listen. Listen, leave. I'm going to level with you. No. Don't get involved in this. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah. Love Holy it. shit, I love that movie. Um, Super Sushi goes on to say, shout out to Jackie Chan spy movies like First Strike, which apparently is Police Story 4. Uh-huh. Never knew that before. Yeah, Super Cop is And who three. am I? I think it's uh, Police yeah. Story, Police okay. Story 2. Super Cop is Police Story 3. First Strike is Police Story 4. Cool. Yeah. And then the Get Smart remake with Steve Carell is flawless. I love I Who used Am to... I. Who Am I is one of my favorite fight scenes of all time. It's the most anime. It's a two-on-one. Oh, really? But he fights them each one-on-one first. Oh. So he's fighting one. It's like, yo, my turn. Uh, one-on-one, Jackie Chan, he kicks both their asses, and they're like, all right. And they like both go at him. I think they do that in... Um, <laughs> the third John Wick. There's He's like fighting two dudes, I and then... It. I yeah. love that trope. Top yeah. ten tropes: one versus one versus one, two versus one. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I love the original Get Smart show. I used to watch that as a kid on Nick at Night all Get the time. Smart, Get uh, Smart, dude. Shoe phone. 
You know what I always think Get Smart is? Hmm. Get Shorty. Ah, oh, yeah, very different. I don't know what Get Smart is. Yeah, Get Smart, you'd like it. It's it's a funny... I have a I have a couple of shout outs actually that yeah. have that have kind of vibes and similar with Get Smart, but I, nice. I want to see if I missed anyone n- mentioning my two other picks, but I, I doubt it. Nice. Uh, Austin Kruckmeyer. Well, it isn't a genuine spy movie. Top Secret is a comedy that parodies a specific subset of spy films in World War Two, uh, of World War Two and the Cold War. A lot of those films are beyond my time, but Top Secret taught me so much about World War II spy film, especially ragtag, specifically ragtag soldiers versus the comically uptight invading force. Top Secret is really good. If you haven't seen it, you yeah, should. Yeah, I don't think should. I have. It's funny. It's a, uh, I think maybe Val Kilmer's first movie? Whoa. Maybe? I think it's his first. I nice. might be mistaken on that. Real Genius might yeah. be his first. Speaking of Val Kilmer, complete random syndrome aside. Nothing to do with Val Kilmer, but it made me think of Brendan Fraser, who is in uh-huh. No Sudden Move. Oh, really? That's the number one selling point. Not Soderbergh, Brendan Fraser. Brendan Fraser's back. Is in it. That's all. <laughs> I just needed to get that out there to get, you know, someone, someone yeah, is that like, got somebody. <gasps> someone is like, really? I'm watching it. Brendan. Has he done, he hasn't done anything since that OJ thing. He had been gone for a minute. Which I didn't see, but I heard it was good. Cesar Villa says, uh, really out of my element here, but other than James Bond, not many come to mind. Does Dallas Corbin, or Corbin Dallas count? He's kind of, For sure he counts. He's like an agent, right? He's an operative. Uh, fifth element we're talking sure. about. Sure. He's kind of undercover, right? It's been ages since I watched The Fifth Element. Does James Cole from 12 Monkeys? Yeah, dude. He's a spy for sure. He kind of infiltrates different time periods gathering information, just not for an enemy. Uh, maybe that disqualifies him. Dominic Cobb does count. I don't remember who that is. The movie description says he's a corporate spy, so yeah, I'm counting Inception. Oh, that's oh Cobb, right? That's his name in Inception. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we're counting. We're counting Inception. Uh, then then Caesar says after doing a Google search for spy movies, there are quite a few I've watched and enjoyed: Red Sparrow, Man from Uncle, Atomic Blonde, all the Mission Impossibles. Yeah, even two. <laughs> I'll defend it till my end of days. Oh, two's um, tough. Two is two's tough. It's a yeah. tough watch. Get smart, Austin Powers, top <laughs> secret. Well, James Willems had a thing where he was like, the the Mission Impossible movies are all a different genre. Like, the first yeah. one is like a classic heady spy noir. Yeah. The second one is like uh, like an uh, Chinese or an Asian action flick. Yeah. And then um, the third one is an action movie, like an yeah. American yeah. blockbuster action movie. God, I love the first one. Insane. Yeah. The first one was really good. Um, De Palma, dude. Yep. In two, Fanny Newton, she just revealed a story not too long ago. She was like uncomfortable on set because of Tom Cruise or something. Oh, really? Like made her uncomfortable. He I like mean, had her. It's like, oh yeah, she said she, he made her super embarrassed. He like embarrassed her because um, he wasn't happy with her take or something or her acting in a scene. So he made her. Sw- they switched roles. They're like, we're gonna switch. He said, "You be me, I'll be you." Like on set, yeah, it was kind of a scathing story. It's like a couple years ago that came out. I and he's not the director, by the way. No, <laughs> like, no. I, uh, I'm not supposed to do that kind of shit I as an know, actor. Like, I you know. don't give notes. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, it's not polite. Yep. If something's not working, the director should be good enough to step in. Mm-hmm. Um, Carl Williams, best flick, Golden Eye. The answer's yeah. a little biased, mainly because I was a fan of the game years before I ever saw the movie for the first time. Show the Americans. Nice. This is a person after your heart. Yeah. Yo, Golden Eye is a legit ten. It holds up. It's a good movie, dude. Sean um, Bean. Sean Bean for England, James. Can't even beat it. You can't beat him. I mean, well, he gets beaten almost every movie he's in. <laughs> <laughs> you can easily beat him. You can easily beat him. Very yeah. killable, yeah. Sean Bean. Incredibly <laughs> killable. <laughs> Michael Seward says, um, best spies have to be James Bond and Jason Bourne. Both JB, too. Nice. Uh, Casino Royale and Born Identities are my f- Born Identity are my faves. Yeah. Uh, Casino's effortlessly cool, and the Identity ushered in a new frantic, frenetic action with mm-hmm. shaky camera, <laughs> green grass. Yep. That left you breathless. It's uh. It, it, I, I love Born, dude. I almost treat it as a cameo. Colin Farrell in Born One. Yeah. As one of the assassins. Yeah. Like, Doesn't speak a word. So intense. Or maybe he does toward the end, but yeah, yeah just like. 
Every time I watch that movie and he shows up as yeah, like a sniper, I'm, I'm like, what? Surprised every time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, even though I know he's in it, I'm like, yeah. what? What are you doing here? <laughs> Get out of here. I don't know. Was he like not big at that time or maybe, was yeah. he just, yeah, that was nuts. I remember like Dash maybe, number two or mm. three. Fights my dad. The book, jumps oh through my the God, window, that, that guy. A, the book fight is, yeah, that that's is in two, best. I think. Jumping through the window. That's yeah. so good. Or is that in one? That's two in one. Three, I, I think that's it. One is the sick, really, really quiet. Oh yeah, almost yeah. too quiet knife fight yeah. in the house. There are so many good fights. All you just hear is, Ugh, uh, yeah. And Franco Potente <laughs> is just like, what? What the hell did I get myself involved in here? That's so good, dude. Yeah, I think it's in two the book. Did you watch the newest with Vikander? Which one? I think it was just called something. Born something, Jason Born something. Maybe it's I think called, it was just Jason called Jason Born. Born. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I saw it, but I don't yeah. remember. It was yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It the got franchise little, might be. It dead, got a little honestly. murky. Yeah, it got yeah. a little murky. Yeah. I mean, I remember. I remember an interview. Because even the Jeremy Renner one was. Like, oh, the Jeremy Renner one was not yeah, very good. No. I remember an interview with Matt Damon after the third one. Yeah. I think it was on Conan or something, and they were talking about it, and he says uh, that he was joking with Green Grass. And he was like, he was like, yeah, if we make any more of these, we got to call it the born redundancy. <laughs> Matt Damon said that. And then there were like three or four more. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, whoopsie. Yeah, the Way first go, three are pretty Matt. solid, though. The, the, some of the shots in three, though, are ridiculous with the green grass. Oh, like, yeah. In the office, the it's most. just two people talking to each other, and the camera's like, <laughs> it's like a fucking earthquake in there. I'm just like, what the hell is going on? Just film it like a conversation, you maniac. <laughs> two people talking in an office. Literally, there's the the, the shot where the, the older lady and the guy, the older guy... <laughs> Uh, who I I can picture his face, but I can't remember his oh name. But uh, yeah, dude. Uh, <laughs> Michael Seward continues. David Strahan, huh? The older guy. Is that him? The Belter in uh, the Expanse. Yes. Yes. Love him. Love him. Love Strahan, him. Strahan. Strahan. Too. David. David Strahan. Yeah, 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 I yeah. love the man. He's fantastic. Yes. So good in the Expanse. Hell yeah. Love the Expanse. Love. The Expanse. Yes, dude. Love it. Love it. Some spies in that. Yeah. Uh, sh- uh, Michael Seward continues. Shout out to Allied, Marion Cotillard, and Brad Pitt. Oh, I saw that one. It's cool. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Anything else to no, say? No, it's cool. Um, yeah. Uh, and they say, please watch the bbc scandinavian joint documentary film called the mole undercover in north korea a real man's 10-year undercover journey to get into north korea so scary the truth is scarier than fiction isla sophia might be interested as she's from that neck of the woods scandinavia not Um, north korea yeah i've been watching so much true crime and documentaries in general so thank you i will the mole undercover in north korea that sounds fascinating um, and then Spy Hard, favorite spy comedy. It's Naked Gun with Leslie Nielsen nice. as Agent Dick Steele, WD-40. <laughs> 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 Laugh a minute with so many gags. Love it. Thank you. Um, yeah, Spy Hard is pretty ridiculous. Sage Mode Q. Uh, not sure if this counts as far as spy movies, but my favorite uh, movie growing up was Enemy of the State starring Will Smith and Gene Hackman. I think that probably counts. Ten years old totally. when it came out, it made me legit scared of the government. Yeah. Not bad. Not a bad idea. They are watching us. It was kind of ahead of the time. Dude, when we were that. kids, we all thought that if you said, like, bomb the president on the phone. Yeah. That, like, the, the FBI they would get you. F- someone would flip the recording on or yeah. something, you know? like Straight up. Yeah. This is true. We all thought that. Yes. Everyone thought that. Everyone. Literally everyone thought that. Yep. But Enemy of the State is sick, yes. <laughs> um... Also, yeah, Will Smith does a good acting job in that. It's a good movie. Uh, oh, you guys about blind spotting. Oh, yeah. Uh, Four episodes, it is also like... Th- nice! They're saying the blind spotting show is good. That they Good, I'm glad, I'm glad. You, you seemed so invested. 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Awesome, yeah. good. Alexander Zirinov. It's funny that for most of us, spy movies mean 
Uh, a spy movie means an action hero fighting against world-threatening conspiracy with mastermind in charge, mm-hmm. even though it's nearly the opposite of what actual secret agents yeah. do. That's true. Zero Dark Thirty. I want to give a shout out to mm-hmm. that movie about chasing down Osama. Oh, yeah, yeah, Some yeah. Some good trade craft I didn't watch that one because I didn't really like Hurt Locker very much. Also, Body of Lies. Russell Crowe, Leo, Ridley Scott, I think, directed it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is an underrated right. movie. Leonardo DiCaprio in this, out of control. <laughs> <laughs> They're both so unhinged. <laughs> I, there's... Oh my god, that's one of the best scenes. Body of Lies. It's so funny. Okay. Like, Russell Crowe is just, like, this analyst. The oh, I've seen Body of Lies. He's the analyst that, like, at yes, home, and yeah. Leo is on the ground. He's like a nerd. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. so good. Leo's it's like, like opposite casting. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Leo's, like, doing this undercover work, like, in the middle of nowhere, and he looks up, and he sees, like, the drone in the sky, and he's like, get your fucking drone out of here! Like, yeah, yeah, see yeah. It, just that. That level I remember of that. I remember that movie. I saw that movie in theaters, yeah. I think, 100 years ago. <laughs> so good. Um, shout out to the, I don't know if it's Wired or who, but they have those videos on YouTube of the lady who used to be, like, in charge of disguises for the for the CIA or FBI or whoever. Whoa. And she, like, talks about actual spy tech Sick. and, like, like, camera pens and, like, how you disguise your face and stuff. They're awesome videos. And it's... It's interesting to to watch because like Alexander here is talking about is like uh it it shows you what's real from spy movies and yeah. what's not and like sometimes you'll be surprised how like goofy they go Crazy. like sometimes sometimes they do stuff that's just like yeah this so is wild. this is real she she also has, uh, does one where she like judges quick changes like people changing disguises cuz that's yeah. like real they'll like they'll like walk from a place to another place and try to, you've got like you've got like 15 seconds to change how you look yeah. So that someone ch- following you will lose you. Yeah. It's super interesting That's stuff. That's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, Shout out to the Oslo woman. If you know, you know. Unsolved mystery. The Oslo woman. Body found, like no tags on the clothes. All this. Was it a Whoa. spy? What, is, she, is she a spy? Is she not a spy? What Check What it out. show is this on? It it might have been an unsolved mystery episode. Okay, okay. The Oslo woman. The Os- look, Oslo woman. Look into it. Oslo. Okay. O S L O. I know where Oslo. Yeah, the, yeah, it's the it's from Norway. Yes, My girlfriend yes. lives like yes. grew up like an hour from yes. there. The Oslo woman. <laughs> Dude, I bet she knows about it. Probably. I, I guarantee she knows. I'll ask her. Okay. Um, Alexander continues. James Bond goes out of his way to make his presence known to the very person he fights against, but we still believe that he is a spy. Ethan Hunt can blow up a good portion of the land, but we still believe that he is a covert operation agent. So shout out to spy movies that are actually about spies and their work, American Made, Argo, Bridge of Spies, and many others that don't come to mind immediately when you think about spy films. And a lar- uh, special huge shout out to 17 Moments of Spring, which is undoubtedly the best spy TV series that was ever produced in the Soviet Union. I hadn't heard of that. That sounds Sweet. interesting. Um, I think Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy fits in with those too. Like, Definitely, yeah, it's a good one. Feels very realistic to yeah, my recollection. Grounded. Yeah. Totally. Um, Jason Wojnar, Where Eagles Dare is a fantastic spy flick starring Richard Burton and Clint Eastwood. I've never heard of this one. Mm-hmm. The first half sees the heroes infiltrating the cas- a castle filled with Nazis, and the latter half is one of the most intense, bombastic action spectacles of the 60s as the protagonists make their daring escape. While the pro- protagonist is not a spy per se, he never assumes a fake identity, I did see Apocalypse Now for the 16th, sixth time recently, second time in theaters, and I just love the man-on-a-mission vibe and the relationship between Colonel Kurtz and Captain Willard. I love Apocalypse Now. Mm. Um, and then there's Bond. My favorite is probably Toss Up Between Her Majesty's Secret Service and Goldeneye. Nice. What is? I mean, Casino Royale is my favorite. Casino Royale, kind of bar none. Yeah, I like Goldeneye and, and Goldfinger. If I'm going OG, really yeah. love Goldfinger a yeah. lot. Which one's the one with the stealth boat? Stealth boat. I don't, were they filmed it in NASA? Because uh, when we were studying Raker. abroad, it might be Moonraker or Doctor No. One of those. It's a yeah. We were studying abroad in the Bahamas, yeah. and for a little bit we were in NASA, and we watched that movie as yeah. uh, just uh, to be like, "Here's how Hollywood uses NASA," you know. And then yeah. then we were like, "Let's go see the real NASA," you know. Yeah. It was cool. Um, really like a license to kill as well. Timothy Dalton unhinged. Probably my favorite theme. 
License to Kill. License to Kill. And tonight I'm going straight for your heart. A Whatever. Golden Eye. Yeah. That's yeah, Golden Eye. Really the the one with um, Chris Cornell is really good too. That was for Casino Royale, I think. Casino Royale is so good in the yeah. intro. Yeah, with the, with like, the cards. Oh, that that, that so actually good. might be my favorite song that, of the Bond Holy themes. Holy shit, that movie. It's Casino Royale is so good. Um, let's see. When do we have to... We should maybe start speeding up here. Eric Sear. Paraphrase. Um, spy movies are a favorite genre of mine, so I wanted to give a shout-out. Tinker Taylor, Soldier Spy. Uh, impeccable script, editing, performances... Uh, best John Le Car ad- adaptation. Uh, I love a classic noir spy movie. Hitchcock's Notorious is one of his best. Best North by Northwest is also a good and fun adventure. I love North by Northwest. And The Third Man really holds up as an all-time great. Mission Impossible is the best ongoing franchise. Fallout is one of the best action movies there ever is. made. I'm not crazy. I'm You're not, not crazy. crazy. Fallout. Special place. Every day that version. goes by, it gets closer to the top of my list. It's crazy good. Yeah. Holy shit. I gotta watch shit. it again, dude. I gotta watch it. It's I liked an, it. I honestly, liked it. I would call it an epic. More than like a spy movie, dude. Mission Impossible Fallout is they a fucking travel. epic. Yeah, they're going around. It's like two and a half hours. Yeah. It's an epic. I like Mission Impossible, dude. You don't have to sell me on it. Give Vanessa Kirby in there. She's got a good arc. Remember that? No. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, she's the like the other. Out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to... Wait, is she? Shout out to the knockless lady, dude. Oh, there's a shout Max. out. Shout yes. out to Max. That was fucking yes, sick. Dude. I remember that now. Yes, so Wait, sick. Is she in Loki? Vanessa Kirby? No, that's not her. No, never mind. No, but I recognize her from stuff. Hobbs and Shaw. Oh she God, yeah, that's and right. The Crown. Never saw the Crown. Mm-hmm. I've heard it's good. Mark Varley, shout out to an underappreciated alternative spy movie from '96. Rennie Harlan's The Long Kiss Goodnight. Yes. Yeah, dude. I love this movie as a kid. I, I was watched wanted it in to, ages. I was wanted to see it as a kid, but it was R, so oh. I didn't get a chance. Neighbor. VHS from the neighbor. <laughs> you VHS from yep. your neighbor. The neighbor, the combination of my neighbor and my dad helped me see so many rated R movies. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, Tokyo Slim, patron saint of reaction shots. My dad absolutely loves The Born Identity. He used to watch Bond together, but since Born came out, his love for Bond has diminished, uh, even as Bond has become more born like Born Identity is literally the only movie I know for a fact he will watch whenever he finds it playing <laughs> on TV. Um, I think there's some older movies like The Conversation, North by Northwest, and Third Man definitely hold up. Uh, here are some modern favorites. Ronin might be my top favorite. Tokyo, top Tokyo ten. Slam. Yeah, Tokyo Slim. <laughs> yeah, might be in my top uh, ten films. A bunch of mercs and ex spooks get assembled for a heist. But who can you trust when nobody is exactly what they mm-hmm. seem? Frankenheimer's best car chase sequences. Insane. Yeah. Oh, I my would, God. Also, quick shout out to some of the best car chases in the biz. Obviously, French Connection. Yeah, the yeah. Peacemaker with that. George Clooney and Nicole Kidman. Mm. Right when George Clooney was becoming a movie star. The Peacemaker. A no joke 10 out of 10 car chase in this movie. Huh. Underrated one. Shout out. Another great uh, car explosion. Uh, another George Clooney flick, Michael Clayton. Oh, Michael Clayton. When he's just standing there and the car explodes, and oh, he's just like, oh. God, <laughs> That's a good movie. That's dude. another one I got to watch again. Holy yeah, I need shit. to see it again. Um, Tokyo Slim goes on to say, one of my favorite slash most quoted scenes, I ambushed you with a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's so good, dude. I need to watch Ronan again. Ugh. I testing, see, he's like testing his reaction His reaction right? speed, yeah. Oh my it's god. It's so funny because like for some reason I like I, like I said before, I would watch Ronan over and over and over again as a kid. Yeah. Obsessed with it. Um and then for some reason I, I thought I heard like people didn't like it hmm. like a, a decade ago or whatever, like yeah. in, in my twenties. I was yeah. like, what, people don't like Ronan? Yeah, what the hell? Maybe I just heard, maybe like maybe one some person psycho one was, psycho yeah. didn't like Ronan and it like got in my head yeah. about it. Yeah. I need to rewatch Ronan, dude. I, yeah. used, I seriously would I'd top watch that movie. ten, top in ten, Tokyo Slim. Tokyo Slim top ten, <laughs> top ten, dude. We'll have to consult <laughs> top ten. We'll have to consult that massive episode we did of like our favorite movies of all time or whatever yeah. the hell it was because he had like a thousand in there and I don't <laughs> remember him saying Ronan. <laughs> what was the theme of that episode? I don't remember. We've been doing this for years. Uh, then they, uh, Tokyo Slim mentions True Lies, swinging Hell the needle yeah. all the way over to action spy dial. True Lies is basically the last hurrah of peak Schwarzenegger. Yeah. 
Uh, got the one-liners, the budget. Got the scene-stealing performances from Jamie Lee Curtis and Bill Paxton. Yeah, for sure. Iconic. Last great James Cameron joint before Titanic led him into falling into a 20-year-long spelunking trip down his own butt. You don't like Avatar Whoa! 1? <laughs> you don't like Avatar 1? Come on. If, if anything, he's taking a submarine into his own butt. Like, he loves submarines. Don't we like different video games for different reasons? Can't yeah. we enjoy Avatar as an IMAX I love theater 3D ride? That can't, can't it exist as that and be the best at that and and that Avatar Flight of Passage is the best Disney ride. There you go. It's incredible. God. And also Confessions of a Dangerous it's funny, Mind. It's funny because Avatar isn't even in my top like 100 movies of all time. How could it? Be? But I feel the need to have to defend it because the hate is absurd. I don't mind Avatar. It's a good simple movie with cool visuals, and it was fun in the theaters with 3D glasses on. Boom. That's all I needed out of it. Yep. And Flight of Passage is a banger. A four-hour line. I feel like we're even underselling the tech. It was 10 that years ahead of its time. That ride tech Avatar IMAX incredible. 3D was 10 years ahead of its time. You fly on a wyvern or whatever, <laughs> and you can feel it breathing under your b- butt, in between your legs. Sounds erotic. It's erotic. <laughs> Disney's sexiest ride. <laughs> Hey man, nice shots. (laughs) Says, hey movie friends, another great topic. I'll just limit myself to best spy flick slash so sorry for the long show. Sorry for the long list. I'm just going to bang through all of these. Bang it. Mission Impossible series, say what you want. I truly believe that every entry has its own merits. Enemy of the state, Tony Scott rallies the ultimate turn of the century cast and his big brother's out to get me thriller. Yes. Love Um, Gabriel Byrne. Yeah, Gabriel Byrne is great in that. John Voight, yeah, crazy. Um... Jack Black's in them? Barry Pepper, dude. Jackson. Oh, yeah, dude. Private Ryan. Um, Argo, a surprisingly impressive film showcasing the Bre- Benster's directing qualities. Ronin, mentioned number two. A Do you great- like The Town or Argo more? I haven't seen Argo. Putting this whole town in my I've rear I've seen The view. Town. I didn't, like, I didn't like Town much. Got it. It was okay. okay. Uh, Ronin, a great action and sort of spy thriller set in France with Robert De Niro, Jean Reno, Stellan Skarsgård, and Sean Bean. Didn't What's the mention, woman's name? Didn't mention her. She's That's gorgeous. a snub. What's her name? That is an affront. <laughs> I, I'm pissed off. Rubicon AMC series. <laughs> the Night Manager, dude. That was Night Manager was good. fun. I like the Night, Night Manager. Night Manager was fun. It was from, uh, what's his face? Mm-hmm. No, it's really important who directed it. I mean, that. starring Tom Hilston and Hugh Laurie. No, dude. Was it Tom Ford or something? No, I don't it's remember real, who it was. It's Korean. It's All a right. really important director. Oh. Who did the Night Manager. I loved it. I don't know if I knew this. I don't remember. Well, I'll keep going. Final shout out, Patriot. No, I'm thinking of something else. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say like I didn't think so. It's British. The night but manager was good though. Night manager is sick. Uh, final shout out, Patriot. Thank you, Isla, for putting me onto this. I di- I still don't uh, really know how to define it as the show constantly made me laugh, feel depressed, cozy, and confused all at the same time. Aww. That's the magic of Patriot. We gotta finish it. Uh, would you kindly best spy flick show? Everyone will mention Bond. My mother used to own a VHS set where the back covers would form a picture, I remember that, up to Timothy Timothy Dalton. Sadly, she passed away before the Craig Bonds got released. That's a bummer. My fondest memory was You Only Live Twice because of the extraordinary alarm sound that uh, was played. I can hear it loud and clear if I think of it. When Blofeld's artificial crater would open and close. Yeah. Uh, As a kid, I was also fascinated by Spectres, a.k.a. the villain's spacecraft catcher, and how it would swallow American and Chinese vessels like a giant mechanical whale to provoke a war between the big nations. Sounds like something Kojima would do. Hell yeah. The whole thing was filmed like a sexual act. I'm pretty sure the film has tropes that haven't aged well, but it still blows my mind that the script was written by children book author Roald, Roald Dahl. Wow, I didn't know hmm. that. That's wild. That is it's weird. sitting on this button on this chair. Me too. The like, button is like weird. It's cutting into my leg. Um, okay. The ones that weren't mentioned that I wanted to mention, The Prisoner definitely counts from the yep. 60s, the show. Uh, he's an agent. He's retired. It's great. Um, OSS 117 Cairo Nest of Spies. Nice. Have you seen this? I, is it Indian? It's um, French. Okay. The, but it takes place... Well, they go all over the okay, place. Okay. But, I mean, it mostly takes place in Cairo. Yeah. But um, it, it passed into my vision for a moment, and I know nothing about it. It is so good. Nice. It's so funny. Nice. It's like a it's like a Bond spoof. Cool. Uh, which I just learned is actually based. On, there's like a book series of it too, hmm. which may or may not be a spoof. But um, yeah, dude, OSS one seventeen, 
I laughed so much. My friend Joe and I back in the day in Chicago, yeah. watching it at the landmark or whatever. We we just loved the hell out of it. Nice. And then also along similar lines, Danger Five is a show. I think it's Australian. It is similar kind of sense of humor as OSS 170, but just like maximum bizarre. Like yeah. the whole thing is overdubbed audio. Like the lip sync is intentionally <laughs> terrible. The subtitles are bizarre. Like some people just have animal heads. Um, it's bonkers. It's so funny. Like they're trying to kill Hitler. Like that's nice. he's like your mission is to get into the thing, get the thing, and as always, kill Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like it's phenomenal. Hell yeah. Danger five. Um, then I asked who the best spy agent is, and pretty much literally everyone said Ethan Hunt. Offended. Uh, and then would you kindly said Matahari, <laughs> so <laughs> who's like a real uh, striptease performer. The WW1 Dutch exotic dancer Matahari was ex- executed by French firing squad yes. after she was found guilty of spying for the Germans. Um, uh, the correct answer is Philip J. Coulson. <laughs> uh huh. John Lakeman. <laughs> and also Peggy Carter. Peggy Carter's great. Love Carter. Um, if an operative doesn't use state secrets as lyrics in folk music, is he really all that good? This is a serious question. <laughs> Super Sushi gave me a serious answer. Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cold Smith says, I think they can be good, yeah, but definitely not living their best life. And then Would You Kindly says, Civil Service sandwiches and there's no bar. I'd much prefer an ounce or two of caviar. <laughs> there's a plane just leaving. It's going to take me there. Something tells me that Moscow's hip this time of year. State secrets straight from my heart. Ah, they make you shiver. State secrets straight from my heart. Ah, come on, deliver. Which I googled, and apparently those are lyrics from a song called State Secrets by a band called City Boy. Okay. okay. I, I am unaware of City okay. Boy. Maybe they're dope. I don't know. Uh, and then, as always, I end with anything else you'd like us to hit? Anything else you'd like us to talk about? Carl Williams wants to know who our favorite James Bond actor, Bond girl, Bond villain, or henchman is. Um, singularly, it's Brosnan in Goldeneye, but overall, it's Daniel Craig. Because I don't yeah. like any of the other Bos- Brosnan yeah. ones. No, yeah, they're pretty bad. <laughs> um, yeah, Cra- Daniel Craig, I think, is the most serious. I mean, it's yeah. a, it was a different shift for Bond. Yeah. Like, it went in a different way, but... Uh, Bond girl, obviously Vesper. Vesper. Bond Ava villain, Green, obviously. Dude. Ava Green. Trevlin. Oh, sure. Um, Le Chief isn't around too... Uh, Le Chief is good. Too long. Yeah, but he's cool. He's really cool, but I mean... Nothing nothing sinister. Yeah, it's, nothing inflamed, sinister, inflamed, I assure inflamed you. Inflamed tear duct. <laughs> nothing sinister, I assure you. Um, Trevlin's the, the goat. And uh, henchman would be odd job. Of yeah, course. I was gonna say the the hat guy, yeah. right? Yeah, odd job. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Odd job. Super sushi. Have you have you got? Oh, the the one with the jaws is pretty good too. Jaws. Yeah, I forget. It's, it's been so long since I've seen it. I forget if Jaws yeah. is the main or the henchman. I thought he was the henchman. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, I. I've, it's been so long since I've seen yeah, that. Yeah. Um. Super sushi. Have you guys seen Stephen Chow's From Beijing with Love? Excellent spoof nope. on the spy genre. I have not. I love Stephen Chow. Gotta check it out. Uh, would you kindly? Uh, you could do a Bond specific episode or best Bond song. I say Aha Dying Living Daylight. Mine is the Chris Cornell one. Love Casino Royale. It's just it gets Or the me. and and Lies of Stick Hill. Uh Caesar Via. Shout out to the recently deceased Richard Donner. Yeah. Yep. The Goonies, Lethal Weapon One. Love Lethal four, Weapon Super, One Three Four. Superman. Assassins. Uh Maverick. Maverick, dude. Love Maverick. The Omen. If you're missing any of those, go watch them. It doesn't matter that Huber doesn't like the Goonies. Still yeah. go watch it. I like Assassins. It's uh, Banderas versus Stallone in that, right? Oh, right. Yeah. I like Maverick. Love Maverick. I love Maverick. Maverick is dude. a 10. Maverick is a fantastic Lethal movie. Weapon 1 is a 10. I also really enjoy 3 and 4. 2 is pretty good. Superman um, 1 is a 10. Superman 2, the Donner Cut, the Donner I have cut. not watched yet. I've heard it's good. The Omen. Mr. Sunday Movies did a thing on that, and they, it seemed. Cool. They approve. Yeah. Nice. The Omen I watched when I was a little too young, so I was a little yeah, too slow at the I don't, time. I don't remember The Omen, but I yeah. saw it when I was a kid. Um, but yeah, Richard Donner, bummer. Uh, Tokyo Slim, a game, a spy name game. <laughs> Love a good game. Uh, I'll say the name or well-known name of a sp- or spy alias. Uh, oh my god or alias of a spy slash secret agent from tv or cinema you tell me what movie or series they are from number six this is isla bait that's from the prisoner, prisoner yeah. i assume 
I am not a number. I am a free man. I love the prisoner. Dude. Hell yeah. Xander Cage is triple X. Okay. Napoleon Solo. That sounds familiar. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I should know John Mason. John Mason. John Mason. No. John Mason. The Rock. Jesus. Mason. <laughs> Isn't it? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, The Rock. The Rock. I thought you were talking about Dwayne no, the Johnson. Movie, the Rock. I was John like, Mason. what are you talking about? Yeah. Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson. Where is he, good, good speed? Where's Mason? John Mason. Yeah. Is it oh. The Rock? Is is the Sean, Sean Connery, Connery, right? Who people think is 007. Yeah. I mean, that's possible. That sounds right. I think it is. Napoleon Solo sounds like something from Harry the 90s. Hart too. Harry, Harry Hart, Hart sounds so movie. familiar. Harry Hart. Harry Hart hurts. Is it this Bruce Willis? Hurts. Is it <sighs> This it, one hurts. I know me. we're going to know it. This as one, one it, yeah. hurts me. Let us know next month, yeah. Tokyo Slim, how we did. I think we got two two for sure, maybe three out of five. I think five. we got three. I think John Mason for sure. We got three. Carla was the prom queen. Varun Kachwaha has a game for us too. So this is the same game as last time if you have any spare time except it's Japanese. Can you guess uh, what the normal title for these films are? The, the, Amer- the Western title. So these are the Japanese titles of... Wild Speed. I know this one. I was reading about this the other day. Drunk Walking. What? Is that's that a, a? That's what I think it is. That's a franchise. That's, that's a what I'm going to call it. We're we're giving the English the real names, right? No, 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 no. no. These are actual Japanese names of actual. Yeah, that's American the Wild movies. Speed is the Japanese name. Yeah. And the English name I'm going to see is say is Drunk Walking. Is that a movie? I have no idea. It could be. No, no, no. They're actual movies. These are real. Big movies? I'm going to know these movies? Wild Speed is Fast and Furious. Oh, okay. So it's big movies. I thought it was like... I mean, I don't know if they're all big movies. Best Kid? Best Kid, I have no idea. So Loving to... Child. No, damn it. They're real movies. E.T.? It's Yeah, it's like the, it's the Japanese okay. name for an American okay. movie. Okay. E.T. Um, Best Kid, I don't know. We have the answers, so we'll find out. We'll get immediate gratification. Man who was imprisoned on the moon. Watchmen. Yeah, that's Watchmen, probably. Yeah. Uh, we are hip hop golfers. Billy, what? B- uh, B- Billy Madison. No, it's the other one. Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. They're not hip hop. Nobody's hip hop. I don't know. Hip hop golfers. Rock you. Rock you. I don't know. I don't this know. is hard. If you could choose yesterday. Eternal True Sunshine lies. of the Spallest Mind. Ooh, Eternal Sunshine is a... Or Total Recall. Sure. All right, let's see. Wild Speed is Fast and Furious. Um, karate Best Kid, Kid is Karate Kid. The Man Who Was Imprisoned on the Moon is Moon. Okay, nice. that makes m- more sense, actually. Who's Your Caddy? Okay. We Are Hip Hop Golfers. I've actually never seen that. A Knight's Tale is Rocky. That's That makes sense, because they talk about that all the time. If You Could Choose Yesterday is Click? Click. What the fuck? hilarious that's very funny um and that's it that's our episode nice. that's spy movies good stuff thank you huber thank you everyone at home for watching and listening um if you want to get in on the fun join uh our patreon patreon.com slash easy allies in the seven dollar or up tiers then you get to be in the discussion club and sometimes we do little film screenings or whatever um well once we did but i'd like to do it again yeah um our top uh, tier on patreon is our shout out tier we have some lovely people in that tier and we will now shout them out we've got elthanis greg the dark knight kettering caleb togi crawford edsgar so i'm a spider so what esco esdocal every time sorry esdocal nick Blue and Dave McKilligan. Shout, Shout out. out. <laughs> thank you all for that. And thank you again for watching or listening. We mm-hmm. will be back next month, second Friday of the month. First Friday of the month? Second Friday second of the Friday. month. Yeah. It'll be <laughs> August. It'll be August. The dog days of summer. Who knows what theme we'll do? Something will hit us and mm-hmm. we'll tell you about it. A week or two beforehand on Mm. that $7 tier. We'll see you then. Bye.